Hello, welcome to my channel, another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am here to do an update on my 100 book challenge. Now, if you are not familiar with this challenge, this is where I have pledged to read 100 books that I already own before I buy any new books. Um, I have lots of books behind me, and I have lots of books on my Kindle, so I have plenty of books to read. Now, there are also some exemptions to this uh, book buying ban. I can accept gifts, um, which would include um, a gift certificate my wife gave me to Amazon. I still have $40 on that. Um, I have not spent any of those $40 since accepting this challenge, and, and that is probably a record for me. I also do not count um, gift card or credits given to me by Amazon. Um, when I buy cat food and select um, a slower shipping, they give me $2 in digital credit and that has an expiration date, so I can use those, and I have. Um, I have bought a couple weeks ago The Sun Also Rises for $1.99 out of a $2 credit, and I picked up a, a biography of Albert Camus writing The Stranger also for $1.99. So in that way, my cat is giving me a few books as gifts. I know, kind of strange to think of it that, that way. So I have read um, a total of 32 books and beginning with this week which was horror week now I have been doing theme weeks every week trying to read a, a, a lot of books in different genres and this week was horror and the first book I read for horror week was Psycho by Robert Block now I picked this up on a used bookstore sale years and years ago it was like a dollar two dollar and I figured hey, I'll read it someday but without this book buying ban I almost certainly would never have picked this up for years and years. And this was a dang good book. Now, I, like almost everyone else in this world, has seen the movie. And the movie followed the book fairly closely. The, the, the main difference is that Norman Bates was older and fatter in the book. And what really interested me about this is how psychotic killers have been betrayed in fiction over the recent years. In this novel, Norman Bates is a putz. He's a fat 40-year-old man, and he kills two people. That would not fly with today's um, market, pretty much. There, there has to be a little more oomph in your serial killer. If, he, if Norman Bates killed two, someone else saying, well, my serial killer has to kill four people. And another author could come in, my killer has to kill eight. And then you get up to the point where these killers are killing hundreds of people and getting away with it. And these super smart FBI agents are on their trail. And this, Norman Bates is brought down by a hardware store owner. It's a great book. If you have not read the book of Psycho, I can highly recommend picking that up. I've read an, I've listened to an audiobook called Worms by James R. Montague. And this is the story of a middle-aged man in his 50s. He's on the coast of Norfolk in England, and he found a little little uh, cabin or, that he wants to buy and retire, and his wife disagrees with him. So um, let's just say, it's really in the book, it's not much of a spoiler. He arranges for her to have an unfortunate accident so he can buy his cabin. However, this place is plagued by hell worms. Um, and this is a genre of the, the killer animal genre. This is where animals of the wild go, go crazy and kill people. I thought this was a pretty effective audiobook. Um, I would not say it's the best horror book I've ever read, but it, it, it was good. I, I really felt for the, this narrator who was uh, basically my age and retiring and he unfortunately had a, had a very nasty wife, and my wife's really pretty good. So um, I can highly recommend that one as uh, the genre of killer worms. After that, I listened to another audiobook, The Great God Pan by Arthur Matcham. And this is just a magnificent novella. Um, I know uh, Michael K. Vaughn was uh, loudly praising this some videos ago, and it, it is a good book. Um, basic premise is a scientist, and this is very early um, 
on where there wasn't a whole lot of science. He says he has developed a procedure where you make an incision in the brain and that brain will allow the person to see into other worlds. In this case, see the great God Pan. And he has a 17 year old girl and he operates on her and she goes completely insane from what she sees. But that's only the beginning of the story. Excuse me. <coughs> um, it follows a couple other events by a woman named Helen Vaughn. And I wonder why Michael K. Vaughn is so fascinated with the book about a woman named Helen Vaughn. No, it's only fiction. He cannot be related to that character. Well, anyway, that is a fabulous horror novella. Um, I can advise anyone who likes the horror genre to pick that one up. Uh, mine was a LibriVox audio recording, so it's public domain, and anyone can download it and listen to it. And I highly recommend it. Next was The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. Now, I did see the movie of this when it came out in the theaters. It must have been the 80s. Um, again, this is the book that I picked up real cheap. I never would have probably read this without this book buying ban. And it was a pretty good book. I do not think it's as good as other novels that The Damnation Game or his short stories. Um, one of the issues that I had with this is I could really see Clive Barker writing this novel to be made into a movie. Um, that's a slight fault with the book. Um, it is a pretty good book. I, I, it's not nearly as good as um, the, the Great God Pan or Psycho, but well worth picking up. After that, I read Slime by John Halkin. Now, this is a book that I saw on uh, Plague by Vision's channel. Uh, the evil mastermind, Criminali, had sent this book to Vaughn, and I said, hey, I have a copy of that book. And we decided to buddy read this book. And this is a, another killer animal book about killer jellyfish. Now, this is a, a pretty trashy book, and not all that great, but not all that bad. Now, the problem with killer jellyfish is that jellyfish are in the ocean. And the author really had to wiggle and dance to get out of that fact and get jellyfish into the open where they could attack more people. Also, jellyfish, while potentially very dangerous, are really not killer animals. So um, both Juan and I decided, yeah, you know, not such a great book. My, my big comment on this was that um, the book was written in the 80s where the Cold War was big and a big fear. And the, the genre of killer animals was very big at that time too. And I often wonder if that, the, the killer animal genre was just a reaction to the, the threat of nuclear war. And people saying, well, the nuclear war really scares me. So let's read something scary about something that I really don't have to worry about. And this is gonna be a big spoiler, but you don't have to worry about killer jellyfish in the real world. They're not gonna get you. Really, jellyfish are not gonna get you. And the last book for Horror Week was a reread of At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft. This was also an audiobook. Um, I read this after, again, watching Michael K. Vaughn uh, talk about At the, At the Mountains of Madness and um, his interpretation of um, these alien beings as just people from another planet. And at, that is a curious statement because H.P. Lovecraft was a raging racist in his younger days. Now, I'm not sure if this vindicates him. I'm not sure if this was a change in his attitude towards race. This just may have been his um, way of writing a better story. And that's sort of how I'm interpreting it. And At the Mountains of Madness is a great horror novel. If you have not read this, you really should pick it up. It's not all that long. Um, the science is a little outdated, of course. It was written in the 30s. So when he talks about a mountain range in Antarctica being higher than the Himalayas, he had to sort of snigger and go, yep, yeah, that didn't happen. So that was all the books that I read for Horror Week. Um, that brought me up to uh, Christmas Eve and 
my wife had other plans for me on Christmas Eve and Christmas and um, didn't get a whole lot of reading done. Um, but next week is going to be Library of America Week. And for Library of America Week, I'm starting off with John Steinbeck, uh, Cannery Row. And this is going to be the story of um, a cannery off the coast of um, California with a bunch of layabouts and route, you know, not too successful men. And I, I kind of like that, those kind of stories. After that, I'm going to be reading some Philip K. Dick. I am going to read the, uh, the third book in the Vallis Trilogy. And the Vallis Trilogy is not really a trilogy. It's just three independent books that some marketing person decided should be a trilogy because it sells better. And The Transmigration of Timothy Archer may not even be a science fiction book, as far as I know. Um, it is the story of an archbishop not an archbishop, a bishop in California um, who gets fascinated with uh, religions and occult happenings. And um, that's about all I know. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that until I pick it up. And the last book I'm going to be reading is a book that I kind of want to finish in December, but I don't think I'm going to. And that's going to be Flannery O'Connor's um, Violent Bear It Away. This is part of the Flannery O'January, Flannery O'January read-along group hosted by Noah, that uh, everyone who reads it must converse. So that is my short little update for my 100 book challenge. I think I am ahead in books read, but that's going to change very soon because um, coming in January, I am going to be reading a very long book. This is the book I read last year. Um, it was absolutely fabulous. I am going to be doing a reread with uh, Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics. And this is 770 pages of very dense text, but one of the best books I've read in many, many years. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye.